Drinking? Why do you keep jinxing things? Knock on wood. <laughs> we'll see. I Fingers crossed. Our names are Mike and Heather. We're traveling the US in our van Appa on a mission to visit all 50 states. Subscribe and join us as we try to figure out this whole van life thing. Thanks for watching. We're back. <laughs> we have survived our second multi-week road trip. It was a lot more comfortable in here being finished and not having things hang down from the ceiling or half finished walls. That being said, there are a couple quick tweaks that we want to make. We're going to try and add a sink. That's kind of what really started the conversation was that we felt like we were missing the ability to get to our water really easily because if we wanted to fill up a water bottle or anything like that, we had to pull everything out of the cabinet and that just wasn't really working. We want to make adjustments to the bed just to, to make it easier to pull in and out. That shouldn't be very difficult. You better um, knock on that one a little bit harder. She just <laughs> said that's not going to be difficult. What we have to do now is unload everything out of the van so we can get it back in into a state that we can work on it. Yeah. We moved out all the cushions and everything that was kind of standing in our way of getting to the bed to be able to start working on it. And if you've watched our first van build video, you know that this bed is kind of the bane of my existence at this point. Maybe one day we'll have a bed. It wasn't the easiest thing to construct and it's still very much giving me some difficulty. It's almost passable, but for some reason when we're in here, it doesn't close quite the right way. It's off by just a smidge and with that, it's not being able to slide in and out smoothly. So that's what we're working on today because there's nothing worse than being in the van having it all the way out which it comes out perfectly fine so see slides 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 good i'm just in the way here but when it's raining or it's in the early morning in a walmart parking lot and you want to be as discreet as possible with it being a bed you want to be able to stand right here and push it back but what happens so when we're out of the van slides in and out pretty easy Kind of does a little clunky thing that we're hoping to try to avoid. But when we're in the van, what you have to do is stand here when it's all the way pulled out. And you don't have as much leverage to be able to get it to move at the right angle. So what it does is that. Because <laughs> it gets really frustrating when you're trying to do it every single morning. <laughs> what we're probably going to do is kind of reimagine this front rail, a couple of like two by four posts along the front. And I think that'll make it a little bit easier. We're gonna start by just deconstructing all of the, the front of this. I hope this all makes sense, but we'll show you what we actually mean once it's all done. It's kind of hard to visualize and explain. And to be honest, we're kind of just making it up as we go. So hopefully this works. So with that, this comes off. This is the piece we're gonna be replacing. Instead of this, we're just gonna have a couple of posts go down the front of it, and we'll put those not right near the end so it's easier to slide in and out without getting caught on anything. The real question is, do we have enough scrap wood in this mess of a garage, or do we have to go to the dreaded Home Depot or Lowe's store? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they may know us by name at this point. We might. Do we? Right. Ooh. This looks like a good two by four. I put all of the wood over here to try and organize, and this is the, the road shower we took down because it's starting to get cold. Organize. Yeah. Very, very loosely. We managed to find two by fours in that mess of a garage, but we still have to go to the Home Depot or the Lowe's because we need a saw. After holding hostage our parents' saw and tools for so long, they finally <laughs> repossessed them, so. I think it's time to invest in our own. So we're just gonna run to the store, grab those, and then get back here to finish the bed. And I think that'll actually be a lot quicker of a fix than what we were thinking. Why do you keep jinxing things? Knock on wood. <laughs> we'll see. I Fingers crossed. One load run later, we're ready to go and start this project. So now we can just kind of do the cuts and hopefully this will be pretty straightforward. Yeah, these should match up pretty much with what these would have been. So we'll probably move these in here and have just two legs doing basically the same job that this rail had done. I think that looks good. I mean, I, I don't think we're sacrificing any of the support. Do you think if we trimmed a little bit off at the bottom and put like those little felt slidey things? I mean, because these fit like perfectly, but I think that might actually be a problem if yeah. they fit too perfect. I'd probably do the felt things. Okay, I think I have some, but where in that mess is the actual question. 
got them. So these are the little felt things that are supposed to make it easier for furniture to slide. So now we just need to trim those two by fours that we just cut a little bit to see if this is gonna work. The good thing is we did find more two by fours. So if it doesn't work for whatever reason, we have a whole nother thing of wood that we can use. So we're gonna try doing it this way because we think this will make it easier to slide. Plus we want to keep our floor nice and unscuffed so hopefully this will help two quick cuts later we got that extra little bit off to hopefully be able to add it down to the bottom there this is kind of what we're thinking just to put like these little sliders on them so they glide across the floor a little bit better ready yep that already feels better it's definitely got more clearance from where this was hitting this side yeah I think this is it. I think this is the right thing. I'm happy with it. Me too. We definitely are going to have another front rail on here to keep the pillows in place. I think we really enjoyed that. And we'll probably do something similar on the front of the bench at the front of the van. We still have some work that we want to do with this, but I'm happy to have gotten the posts in. I think this slides a lot easier and I'm, I'm much happier with how that is and the ease with which we'll be able to get the bed in and out. What we can do now, since we already have all the cutting equipment out, is try to work on the sink idea that we have. We're going to be attaching this collapsible sink over to this side of the cabinet. What we're thinking is something similar to the flip up shelves that we have on the back. We basically want to kind of have a board, cut out a space for this to sit into, and then be able to just flip it up and drop the sink down from that position. So we are going for a kind of a low tech design for a sink because we did want to make it have an easier water access. All we really are wanting to add is that little faucet where you can put it into any water source and it just pumps up. And we just want a kind of a catch all just in case it spills over a little bit when we are filling water bottles or at the end of the night if we wanted to like wash our face or something like that and have a little bit of a runoff then all we would do is make sure that we're dumping it responsibly. For this van and this build, I think this is perfect for what we're looking for. There, kind of snaps in. Okay, it's a nice snug fit too. That's okay, what cool. we want. So and then that does just like that. The idea is that we want to be able to take it out still so that way if we are at like a campsite or something like that, we can take the sink out of the van and still be able to use it, but then also inside the van. So that's why we don't actually want to permanently attach it to this. I want it to kind of be able to remove and put back in. And just like that, we have a sink now, or at least the base of it. We're still gonna have to figure out the water situation, but that will be probably for another day. But bam, will you look at this? We got the nice little pop-up things. Oh, let's try to close it and see if that works. Yeah, that's probably something that we should be ready for. Closes up. And the good thing is that this was supposed to fold flat and technically use as a cutting board. It leaves the space flat, so that way if we ever did want extra space, we could always pop it up and have more counter space to work or something. But yeah, look, it shuts perfect. And we'll stain this so that way it matches here as well. We might have to add another clip thing so that way it doesn't go. Like, do you think it'll bounce when we're driving? Probably. Um, so yeah, we'll probably want some kind of lock on it. Yeah, but maybe we could add like another one of these down at the bottom or something like that. But I am very happy with how it turned out so far. So that was actually not too bad for a day of work. We got the bed kind of fixed how we want it and we actually got the sink going. I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. We're probably gonna call it a night now. With it being fall, it's getting darker sooner and it's cold. You can see we're already in our jackets. So I think that's it for us tonight. We might do some cleaning up, but we are going to call it with the power tools and, and construction. We'll check back in tomorrow and see what else we can get going. All right, so it is the start of another work day here and we actually have company. We roped our brother Nate into coming over and doing some more electrical stuff. So he is hard at work while we're acting like a road construction crew and watching. We'll call it supervising. <laughs> I informed Heather that there's a thing that can monitor the battery percentage and how full so they don't drain it and damage it. So she ordered this off Amazon and it's not quite what we were looking for so <laughs> I had to extend the wires. I'm about to attach it and hook it up. The reason that we wanted to get the monitor to be able to check the power levels is because during this most recent road trip 
we ran out of power because we weren't in the sun enough to charge the solar. So this will help keep an eye on where all of those levels are at. So it's just adding more kind of fail safes and also just keeping us better updated on the situation with the energy. And is forcing our brother to hang out with us. He's never gonna come hang out with us again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you just zip strip it on? These, you're supposed to cut with like a jigsaw, a little rectangle, and then it just pops in. I see. But since we don't have a panel here, I'm just gonna rodeo tie it like this, and then come back up through and just zip tie it. So that'll nice. hold it right in this corner here. This is just gonna be long enough, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, such is life, coming up a little bit short. <laughs> that zip tie is just, not long enough <laughs> for the mounting idea that I had. It's just supposed to zip tie right here and it's not gonna work out. So we're gonna have to <laughs> use two, which is gonna make it less of a nice fit. Clearly Nate hasn't watched many of our videos to know that that's how most of the things are panned up is trying to jerry rig things together. So it'll work perfectly for what we're looking for. Fed a zip tie down around the battery voltage meter. We got the two zip ties holding it and then calling back up through now we'll hook it up. Boom. There you go. Now you can't cut yourself. I'm sure we'd still find a way. So what we got here is 100% 14.4 volts. Let's turn some of your lights on. Turn on your fan too, that'll draw some. Since they put the fan on and the light, it drew some current on the battery. It'll rebound a little bit, but they should be able to run for several hours. Cool. Thanks, Nate. Well, while we have my brother here, I'm able to hold him hostage and force him to give a rundown of the electrical system since I did not do a very good job when I tried explaining it. <laughs> I'll give you a quick rundown of what we got here. You can kind of see the solar panels mounted with some one hole straps on their roof rack. These solar panels are wired in parallel and they come down to the roof, chase them through the wall, down around, and they come right into here where you have the charge controller. It takes the raw DC voltage in and it modulates it to charge the battery. This is one of the most important aspects of the electrical build is the type of batteries these are. They don't um, discharge harmful gases while they're charging because these are two six volt batteries. So we went that route because you got a higher amp hour rating by going with two six volts instead of two 12 volts. So they're wired in series that give you 12 volts off these two taps. DC loads are powered directly off of all those. The battery cables come down here and go to their inverter. And the inverter takes their uh, DC voltage and provides them with some AC right here. It can be turned on and off. Usually you keep it off so it doesn't drain the battery down. From there, they have on their charge controller, they can run loads directly off of it to use some of the solar coming straight in. You can turn that on and off and that's what controls their lights. And then they also have the jackery that they can parallel everything off of. And they also have the shore power right there. A lot better explanation than anything that we tried to do earlier. Basically, my plan is going to be having my dad and brother on speed dial if anything goes wrong. Are you sleeping on the job? <laughs> I think it's funny because he was totally making fun of us when we first had this idea and now he thinks it's super cool. We're trying to convince him, so you can see his truck down at the end of the driveway, but we're trying to convince him to deck it out in like overlanding stuff. Overlanding is kind of similar to van life, except it's more off-road centered and, and kind of outdoor camping and things like that. So we're trying to get him to do that and then go along with us on some of our adventures so we're not the weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> in our family anymore. Uh, I don't think he's quite sold, but I mean, he's used to be comfortable in here. So maybe, maybe we're wearing him down. Isn't it it's comfy? Like, everybody yeah, keeps, everybody keeps asking us like, how do we fit in here? But it's actually a pretty like good sized bed. Bye Nate, love you. Thanks for helping. Yeah. <laughs> Work on getting that overlanding stuff together. He's still not sold, but thanks Nate. Hello and welcome to another day of van build. If that sounds familiar and never ending, it seems the same way to us sometimes. Today we're finishing some of the last touches with a few woodworking projects and then trying to get the sink done. And then we'll have a little bit of staining and painting and stuff like that. Well, this is what we're working with. We got our sink attached. So we have painting and staining the surface a little bit lower on the list, but right now we're all worried about the construction. So this is a water pump. 
that I got off of Amazon that we're going to attach somehow over here and then drop down to our water source. This tube isn't long enough to connect to the jug of water that we have down below. So we did just run to Lowe's, our favorite store ever, and just bought longer tubing that we're gonna connect. So it's gonna fit perfectly on here and give us a lot more to work with to be able to wind through the cabinet. So we need to figure out how to mount it on here. Because this is actually designed to sit right on top of a water jug, but because we're not having the water jug all the way up here, we need to kind of modify the base of it a little bit. This is the idea of it. Now, it's all about the execution. We have this Airwick freshener that sat like this, that honestly I haven't used since we moved into our apartment, so it's sat there for three years. But we took the base of that off and plugged this and slid this in and it fits perfect. But with this, there's these little sections right here that now we can screw in. I'm excited <laughs> to see how this works. If you look in here, there actually were four little clips that we attached to the countertop. So it's really nice and stable in here now. And then we fed the hose up through so we can connect that here. Make sure that's in tight and then kind of just pull that and then set that in there and then we can just feed the excess line down under the cabinet this is what the inside looks like we threaded it underneath here as you can see and then it's going to go in this big jug and we're going to put it in this hole over here that actually had came with it it's like a little plug thing we still have the plug just in case but we're going to weave it into here and then we're going to be able to like fill it up from here but instead of lugging this big thing out and flipping this over, pouring it into our water bottle, we'll just have this nice and easy spout. And then with this, the angle is pretty nice for actually using this as a sink or if we wanna fill up our water bottles or a pan so we can cook pasta, anything like this, this is all gonna be really nice. Now that we've gotten the sink mostly constructed, we're actually gonna call it a night. We're gonna do one slap of a stain on here and then get back out here tomorrow to hopefully finish it. So it's now a few days later <laughs> with the temperatures dropping. We kind of just wanted to hurry up and get everything done and haven't really been the best at filming. We were able to finish up some of the painting. So now everything in here is a fresh coat of paint, which just makes it look all nice and spiffy, including a new coat of paint on our cabinet here. Also new to our cabinet are these trim pieces that we placed around the edge to hopefully protect the contact paper a little bit better down there. So that way it doesn't start peeling up or get wet and have any issues down there. Inside the cabinet, we have it all kind of notched out perfectly to fit all of our gear. So I think that really wraps up about all of the projects we have going on in the van at this moment. It feels a little bit weird to be able to say that it's complete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of other things that we'll find along the way, but yeah, as of now, I'd say it's mostly complete. We're gonna go a little bit more in detail in the next few videos, just to show you kind of the inner workings of everything that we have been working on. We'll give you a closer look at the bed next video, and then, dare I say, a whole van tour pretty soon. We're really excited about our van. <laughs> Leave in the comments if there's any questions you have about the van that we can answer. If there's anything you wanna know that we don't cover, let us know and we'll see if we can answer it as best as we can. But until then, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.